welcome to Tai Chi. Let's warm up. Hands at your waist, turn your neck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stretch your neck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn your shoulders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Expand your chest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Waist exercise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Airplane, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Touch toe. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn your hips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Be careful. Shift your weight. Kick your foot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Kick your butt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn your knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. Heisman, open and go first bend, parallel feet. Choose one side, cross and hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Short one, one, two, three, four, five. Other side, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, good Tai Chi posture, po practicing our golden cockerel. Here we go. Shift our weight to the left, up. Golden cockerel stands on its left. Down, center and up. Opening up our span, concentrating up. Opening up, shifting weight and up. Down and up. Down and up. Kicking out, shift weight up and out. Up in line. One more set. Holding our ball on a T stance. Root down, out into the side. L stance, bowl stance. Sit back all the way. Twist step, T stance, out, L stance, bow stance. Sit back, twist step, hold your ball on the T, out and to the side, part the wild horse's mane. Sit back, twist step, T stance, L stance, Bow stance, sit back all the way, pivot, T stance, L stance, bow stance, sit back, twist step, T stance, listen carefully, out into the side, part the wild horse's mane, flip that hand and meet it, sit back, twist, cup, Open, flip, meet, close. Cloud hands, middle. Open, middle. Only flip, meet, use your torso. Middle, flip, meet, close. Middle, flip, meet, open. Middle, only flip, meet, shift your weight. Cup, center, golden cockerel. Open, down, center, and up. Open, down, center, shift weight up and out. Shift weight, center, counterbalance. Grasp the bird's tail. Out into the side, ward off. Then, grasp the bird's tail. Look back. Turn and then square, contact, push. Separate, roll back. Roll up and forward. Sit back, twist and turn. On a ball and a tee, out into the side, L stance, bow stance, but grasp the bird's tail. Look back, sit back, turn, then square, then contact, 
push, separate, roll back, roll up and forward, sit back, twist and turn, open and open, in and in, off the ground, right hand on the inside of the cross as we embrace the tiger, up, rotate, push out, energy of the right, pushing out that left hand, separating, dropping our shoulders, making ourselves small, wrapping around, heel up, off the ground, toe down, heel down. Okay, part of our warm up. Okay, commencing form. Slowly drain the weight, heel comes up, off the ground, toe down, heel down. Hands rotate, up, take a deep breath in. Shoulder level, drop your shoulders, exhale, flex your knees. Holding our ball on the T-stance, going to part the wild horse's mane. Out and to the side, bottom hand advances. Here it is. Sit back all the way. Twist out. Hold your ball. Heel out. Bottom head advances. Part the wild horse's mane too. Sit back. Twist out. Hold your ball for centering. Heel out on an L stance. Bottom hand advances. Part the wild horse's mane, three. Half step forward on your toe as you hold your ball. Spin it to the left as you sit back on your back foot. Raise up your right hand, raise up your left foot. Set it down on its toes at the same time you do your salute, which is white crane spreads its wings. The right or top hand slices through the edge of your left shoulder. So that's an area where you need to put your saluted hand, the right hand. So if you can follow what I'm doing, the top hand needs to slice through the edge of your left shoulder. So that is an area in which your salute occurs. If it occurs too far forward, it'll never slice through the edge of your shoulder. If it falls too far back, it'll slice through your head instead. So you need to turn your baby finger in an in angle that will slice through an imaginary line that is at the edge of your shoulder, okay? And it needs to be above your forehead. So the weight now, after you get this position, and if you can see, the stem of my hand is down, and this is where I am. So it couldn't be like this or any other way, but stem down. So this is where it should be, and the angle should pass through my, my left shoulder. Now look at our feet. The right hand is on the top. The right foot bears your weight. So to counter that, our left hand holds at the side of our thigh a ball the top of a ball. Our left foot is on its toe without much weight because the weight is bared on our back or right foot, right? So you get that feeling that you're on a chair or stool sitting on it. Now, when you drop your top hand, the stem is already down you're gonna come down even more as you drop now your shoulder and it's already rated, weighted and rooted, okay? So let's get it back into position. Slicing that shoulder, stem down, weight on the back. When we, after we do our white, white crane spreads its wings, we drop our front foot, flatten it as we bring down our shoulder bisecting our body. When we bisect our body, this hand needs to come down in the area of your navel or your dantian, rather than out here or beyond it, coming down, bisecting the half of your body to come around, okay? So we're weighted down on our right. Our toe is, has little weight. 
on our left as well as the left hand counterbalances by holding that ball. We're in a good white crane position. Now, weight on the back. As we, after we set, we drop our front foot as we drop our shoulders to bisect our body. We look back now at our back hand that's higher. And our left hand, you remember, is my type of parallel. We're gonna brush our knee. Weight is still on the back. We come ear and hand and heel and turn and brush our knee. Sit back, twist out, parallel and higher, looking at it, bring it to your ear, multitask, hand down, heel down, brush your knee too. Sit back all the way, twist out, shift weight, parallel and higher, ear, heel, hand, face, brush your knee, three. Today's lesson, half step forward on your toe. As you sit back on your back foot, you reposition your hands and rock the front foot on its toe. Set down on your heel at the same time you sit down your, your lute. Wait now on the back. Okay, so I'm gonna, you keep your position, I'm gonna turn around. You keep your position and we said, the weight remains on the back foot, which is your right foot. You're on your heel this time of your front foot, sitting on your imaginary stool. The lute is played in this way. The left hand is higher, almost as if it's in the middle of your body. And the right hand is lower across the bend of your left elbow, towards the center of your body also and the weight definitely on the back, okay? Hardly any weight on your heeled foot, all right? Now, just to understand why we're in this position. When we repulse the monkey, the front foot comes down and do it. The center hand is already centered and the right hand goes towards the back and higher and we open. So doesn't this all sound familiar from the 10 form? We set ourselves up, okay? So this is in the best position to do repulsing of the monkey. So here we go. Looking at your back hand, weight on the back. Lift, bring back ear, heel, pivot, and slide. Centered already higher and open, weight on the left, lift, ear, toe, heel, pivot on the ball of your foot as you slide one more time. Okay, so we'll stop there because I think people are running into out and we're gonna warm up and do Tai Chi walk. Then let's see if we can get all the way to repulsing of the monkey again, okay? Okay, and if you um, need to move for better view, that's fine, okay? So can I get the first row to move back a little bit more? Okay, all right, here we go. We'll take hands at our waist this time. Good Tai Chi posture, dropping our shoulders. Result of that, our butt is tucked under, our pelvic bone is flared up, our chest is sunken, our knees are relaxed, our chin is down, our tongue is on our palate. Okay, good, thinking of good thoughts, here we go. Pivot out on your heel, address hips and waist, shift your weight, heel out on an L, rotate hips and waist, don't lock your knee, bow stance. Sit back all the way, twist out, shift weight, address he, um, hips and waist, heel, rotate, Flatten, bow. Sit back all the way, twist out, shift weight, address hips and waist, heel out. Definitely show me that rotation of the hips and waist to do a bow stance. Sit back all the way, define that, pivot out, 
Make sure your hips and waist are addressed to that left foot before you put your heel out and then definitely show me that you're moving your hips and waist to get there. Sit back all the way. Twist out. Shift weight. Heel out. Energy up and across. Bow stance. Sit back all the way. Twist out. Shift weight, address hips and waist. Heel, show me that you know how to rotate to get to a bow stance. Getting ready to hold our ball. Sit back. Twist step. Hold your ball. Heel out. Bottom hand advances. Art the wild horse's mane one. Sit back. Twist out. Sh shift weight, hold your ball. Heel, bottom hand advances. Move that hips and waist. Show me that you're doing it to part the wild horse's mane two. Sit back. Twist out. Hold ball for better balance. Heel, bottom hand advances. Move that hips and waist. Here it is. Let's go slowly. Half step forward on your toe as you hold your ball. Weight on the front. As you spin your ball to the left, your back foot comes down to hold that weight and your right hand comes up, your left foot comes up as you counterbalance, put it on its toe and salute. White crane spreads its wings. Then ask yourself, does your weight, is your weight on your back or right foot? Is your right hand in the proper position, slicing the edge of your left shoulder? Are you wearing your mittens? Is your left hand to the side of your thigh, holding yet another ball in a mitten fashion? Is your weight on the back so that there's only a little weight on your toes? If it is, you think through what you're gonna do. You know that you have to drop your shoulder. You know that you have to drop the left foot. So here we go. Dropping your left foot to flatten, Bisecting as you drop your shoulder, come closer in the area of your danten below your navel. Look back without moving your hips and waist severely. Right hand higher, left hand up by your shoulder, parallel. Multitasking. Ear, hand, heel, turn, energy up and across. Brush your knee, one. Sit back, twist out, address hips and waist parallel and higher. Look at the back hand, ear, heel, hand, face, brush your knee too. Sit back, twist out, shift weight, parallel and higher, ear, heel, hand, face, Turn, brush your knee three. Half step forward on your toe. Reposition your hands as you sit back on your back foot. Rock your front foot to the toe. Set it down on its heel at the same time you play your lute. Going on. First look at our lute. How is our lute? Is our left hand coming towards the middle of our body? in a mitten fashion. It's our right hand across from the crux of our elbow and are we weighted on our right. And the two hands are not parallel, but the right hand is dipped towards the elbow. Drop your front foot, reposition your hands. It's already in the middle, so the right hand goes up higher. We open. What are we going to do? Weight definitely on the back foot. We're going to multitask. Ear, heel, toe, heel. Pivot on the ball of your foot as you meet two balls in the middle. Then slide back and push forward. Centered already. Left hand higher, look at it, open. Weight on the back is a trick. 
ear, toe, heel. Pivot on the ball of your foot to meet ball, the two balls in the center. Slide back, slide forward. We do it four times. Center, higher, open. Glance at it. Weight on the back, ear, toe, heel. Turn your face, meet two hands. Slide, push. Center, higher, open. Weight on the back, ear, toe, heel, middle, slide three. Center, higher, open. Weight on the back, ear, toe, heel, pivot, slide, four, higher, open, lift, ear, toe, heel, pivot, slide, weight on the back, but this time we're going to have to come up and shift our weight so that the heel can move to pivot, trying to make the connection from the 10 form to the 24, because we learned the 10 so well that there's no sense in just letting it go. We apply what we learned, it's good habits, to the 24. So, so far, this is what we learned, and maybe if by watching, you can look at something more specific to see how um, you could have done it, okay? So we said that we were I'll just start from here, parting the wild horse's mane, one, without locking that back knee, which is so easy and tempting to do, coming out, shifting my weight, holding my ball for better balance, showing me definitely that my hips and my waist are coming to address that outward foot. Here it is. Sitting back all the way, then twisting out, holding my ball for better balance, Bottom hand advances, part the wild horse's mane, two, three. Half step on my toe as I hold my ball. I'm gonna spin it to the left as I sit back on my back foot, raise up my left foot, my right hand, bringing it down simultaneously as a salute for white crane spreads its wings. Weight on the back. I'm gonna drop my front foot as I bisect, coming towards my navel and dantin, swirling back to look at my back hand, bringing it to my ear and multitasking to brush my knee, one. Sitting back, twisting out. This is a balancing right here. I don't have my ball, don't lock that knee. Sit back, parallel and higher. Ear, heel, hand, brush knee, three. Half step on your toe as you reposition your hands, rock the front foot on its toe and set it on its heel to repulse the monkey. To set you up correctly for repulsing, the front hand is already centered. The back hand, you recall, we can't twist further this way but across and slightly more so that our hips and our waist are not torqued. Looking at it at a glance, weight on the back, I'm going to bring it up and down at the same time I bring my e to my ear, to my heel, meeting both, ball both hands in the middle to catch those two balls at different locations and then sliding and pushing forward. Centering, higher, Open, weight on the back, looking at it, up, ear, heel, pivot on the ball of my feet, foot, and slide. Two, center, open, higher, weight on the back, ear, toe, heel, pivot to the middle, repulse, three, center, open, Weight on the back, higher, ear, toe, heel, pivot, slide. Pivot on your heel, 
Bring it up on a tee at the same time you hold your ball. Okay, so it's a challenging um, movement, but I think if we, um, repulsing the monkey, that's it, or uh, grasping the bird's tail, sorry. This is where, he, um, let's see, this is where you need to finish this. And as you finish this, you're setting yourself up for the next one because I'm not gonna slide here, keep my 50-50 here. I'm, I'm physically setting myself up to put that weight on the back, yeah? So if you're, if you're really thinking about what you're gonna do, hey, you don't even need a transition. You just go right into it. I think the hardest part is coming up higher, waiting for that steady, steady moment to come back. Now you see that I, my foot was here, my weight is here, what did I do? I went all the way back, my leg did not stop and come back here. And it may take you um, a transition to get there but I really believe that if you can understand what I'm gonna to say to you, that if you can get that weight totally on your back foot, you are more, you are safer, you will have the confidence to, to not worry that you will never, you will never um, fall. The, the weight is on the back, it's that thing where you can do anything you want it, and coming out a little further helps you to make that, to make the next movements. So say, and even then the next movement, because now you're in a good position for your, your successive um, repulsing of the monkey. So let's see if I can do it a little bit wrong to drive a point. So I'm on my back foot, and I want to come up, up, and I want to come, not, I, I'm doing it incorrectly, and I'm here, I'm pivoting on the ball of my foot, I'm sliding. This does not, it's too squishy, it does not give me that um, weight that I need on my back foot. It does, but it doesn't give me the distance to make it, it's just too tight in here, just the way we talk about why do we come out into the side and why do we take that nice comfortable span if you come out into the side and you're stinky. So if you can think about Tai Chi walk when we're clearly out to the side and then draw the parallel that whenever you repulse the monkey, you are doing a backwards Tai Chi walk. So here, back, this way, this way, this way, this way. Clearly an L stance, no clashing of my feet because I am doing a Tai Chi walk, but in reverse. So, yeah, it's, it's a little, it's off. It's never in the same uh, linear plane, yeah. So very good. So does that visually, do you understand? Do you see that? First is being able to see it and then trying to apply what you saw and then understand it um, uh, through words mentally why we're doing it. Okay, so I wanna go on a little bit more since that was um, a, part, a good portion of what was to be done. So if I'm playing the loop this way and I may need to repulse the monkey, my weight is on the back, I come up and I put this on a toe, it's as if it's a zigzag. So it's weight on the back, of course, up, toe, heel. Now, it's about 50-50 in, in positioning, in body weight. Then you're gonna pivot the front foot and it's zigzag like this. On its ball of its foot, on the ball of the foot, and comes back down. So this is something that we're gonna do. Watch one more time. Weight on the back. Up, toe, heel. 
pivot on the ball of my foot. Down. All right. So now let's practice how we're going to uh, play our lute. Weight on the back on a 45 degree, right foot on a line. So let's just start this way, okay? Two feet on a line, different line. Drag the right foot back 45 degree, weight it down. Heel on your left foot, playing your lute. Everybody got it? So your, your energy is on your right foot. Your left foot only has the heel. In the same fashion, the left hand is towards the middle of your body. Your right in a crux, because we're doing Yang Tai Chi, where there's always a bend in the elbow. And the right hand is, a, the palm is across the bend of your left elbow. And you're wearing your mittens. And at this point, you're saying, hurry up because my back foot is hurting. Well, that's good because you have the right position. Now, you're going to drop your front foot, flatten it, as you then, right hand goes back a little uh, uh, further than the side, you open to the ceiling. At no time does your weight ever change. Now, weight it down even more, bring the left foot up and toe, at the same time, you bring it to your ear for better balance. Meet as you pivot on the ball of your foot. As you slide, shift the weight to your back. Okay, and you notice that my left hand now doesn't go totally back this way. It stops as soon as the a wrist or side of my uh, left hand touches my hip and I say, hey, is that right hand catching that ball in the center? Is my weight on the back? It even gets heavier as you center, higher, look, lift, ear, toe, heel, pivot on the ball, meet, and slide. Center, higher, look, lift, Toe and ear, heel, pivot to the ball, center, slide. Center, higher, look, weight on the back, lift, ear, toe, heel, pivot on the ball, slide. One more, center, open, lift, toe, ear. Heel, pivot on the ball, and slide. One more. Center, open, lift, ear, toe, heel. Pivot on the ball, meet and slide. Okay, pivot on your right heel. That means you're gonna have to shift some weight off. Reposition your hands, left hand on the bottom, right hand on the top, hold the ball on the tee. Way down on the right now, okay? All right, good. Repulsing of the monkey uh, in the 24 is a little bit different because you're moving. And, and uh, some of the things that can help you is the hand is out, the forward hand, and we learned that forward hand is your orienting hand. It orients you, orients you to the straight line. But, uh, and so you still do that in terms of when, when you're coming from this position, opens up, this stays here, but this becomes like your rudder and says, we're going to go in this direction. And another thing that happens is you've shifted back and this arm is back here. When you move backwards, you can use your arms and legs to help you stay stable. And it's almost like if you watch a ballerina. When a ballerina wants to go fast in a spin, this goes here. When they want to go slower, this does this. When you're out here, you're sort of in a stable position, okay? 
But when you come back in, you're moving. So it's important to time this movement with this movement. Because what's happening is you consolidate. And you can stand here for a long while if you got strong enough uh, 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 substantial leg. And then as you come forward with the hand, the leg comes backward at the same simultaneously. You don't want to be doing this and then this. It's up, up, and you get a subtle rotation. Tai Chi maneuvers when you're moving to stay centered. You stay on your spiral, dantin, the three dantin are together. And when you're going forward and backwards or sideways, this dantin sort of takes over. So up, and then you see you turn your shoulders, and as you turn your shoulders, you're doing a pumping action. Okay. All of these movements, front, back, sideways, whatever they are, you're, you're basically coming through your center. And that's, this is the opportunity to be thinking, not just hands, but back here, the coordinator, remember? The, 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 the core muscle, it's coordinating movements. If you, you're thinking about the periphery here, what happens, you get sucked into either going too far this way, too far that way. But if you're pumping your hands, you know, or you can start to focus on the center. That's, and you center here, it helps you stay upright with your Tai Chi posture, and you're doing this, you know, all centered here and rotating forward back with focus here. Actually, uh, repulsing of the monkey is uh, one specific movement that you can really um, see and feel that your whole body needs to be in sync and needs to move at a specific time. And in your um, goal to accomplish this, the timing and using your whole body, you will stay safer. But to teach it, we need to realize that it is a multitasking and certain elements have to occur, but they occur together. Now, when you pivot on the ball of your foot, you might wanna just, um, you know, work that into yourself because everything that we've done so far in Tai Chi, we've always pivoted on our heel, okay? But in this situation, if we were to pivot on our heel, our weight shifts so we cannot get into the good position that we need to. And if we were to line it up again with Tai Chi walk, this would be a reverse of Tai Chi walk, okay? Um, I think the only good, the only way to get it really done well is to keep on practicing, but practicing with probably a good with a lot of accuracy accuracy and timing okay so maybe that's what we should but a rule of thumb is always to make sure just like the how you learn the l stance so well then whenever you repulse the monkey this has to sort of go and like an angle because to compensate for the heel coming down if you do not make that compensation and you just say i know that i'm going to be clearly away from my foot, which is at this point correct, but once you come down, it clashes. So you're gonna to have to compensate and come out. Try to bring this knee fully out and then in, and there you have your L stance, yeah? So I know people know how to do it. They do it every day in their sleep almost, but try to get it a little bit better, okay? And it's a gradual thing, not something that maybe you can, um, you can understand right away, but maybe helping your body to move in that way over time, okay? So we're gonna start with our lute. Weight definitely on the back foot. Two feet on two lines, two different lines. Move the back or right foot to a 45 degree, weight it down, put your heel of the left foot and position your lute, weight on the back and ask yourself, are you wearing your mittens and is your right hand 
across from the crux of your elbow in an inward motion rather than two hands parallel. Ready? Drop your front foot, center the front hand, weight on the back, never changes. Right hand up higher, open. Weight on the back as you lift, ear, toe, heel. Pivot on the ball of your foot as you meet in the middle. Slide forward, back, center. Glance at your higher hand, open. Weight on the back, lift, ear, toe, heel. Slide and pivot, slide, sorry. Center, higher, glance, no torquing of your hips. Weight on the back, lift, ear, toe, heel. Pivot on the ball, slide. Center, higher, glance, lift, Ear, toe, heel, pivot, slide. Center, higher, glance, lift, ear, toe, heel, pivot, slide. Center, back, higher, lift, ear, toe, heel, pivot, Slide, center, higher, open. Lift, ear, toe, heel, pivot on the ball, catch the balls and slide. Center, higher, lift, ear, toe, heel, pivot and meet, slide. Center, higher, open, Ear, toe, heel, middle, slide. Center, higher, open, lift, ear, toe, heel, middle, slide. Center, higher, weight on the back, ear and toe, heel, middle, pivot, slide. Center, higher, lift, ear and toe, heel, middle, middle, slide. Center, higher, lift, ear, toe, heel, middle, slide. One more, center, open, lift, ear, toe, heel, Middle, slide. Why do I want you to be at this position? We're gonna think about what we're gonna do. We're gonna grasp the bird's tail, but we're in the wrong position. Weight is still on the back. When we're ready to grasp the bird's tail, we can come up and lift our, pivot on our heel by lifting the sole, moving and repositioning our hands at the same time we move our feet. So this one's a kind of tricky but it'll work, okay? It'll work because you're gonna have to come into this final position to grasp the bird's tail. So you're gonna have, your weight is on the back foot, but you're gonna have to alleviate some of this weight because it's, it's now gonna be a insubstantial. Right now it's substantial. So you're gonna have to do shift a little bit and then allow the, the heel to pivot positioning on a parallel or on a line. As you bring this left foot here, you're helping your body by repositioning your hand to a ball. So you see how safe it is, and so you use your ball for safety. You think about, yes, you can't just remember that you just have to pivot any old way. You're gonna have to think through that, how can I pivot when I have all this weight here? I'm going to have to be smart and alleviate some of this weight, shift it to this forward foot to allow this to pivot and at the same time consolidating my energy for the next movement, okay? So in teaching any form or teaching Tai Chi, you can be good followers and you can say, I know she said ear, hand, heel, face, and 
stretch out that back leg, put that uh, weight on the back and everything. But you have to understand what you're doing, why you're doing it. So to do it incorrectly, I would be playing my lute like this. I would have this like this. I would bring this to my ear and then I would decide, uh oh, I need to put my weight on the back. And then that's too late. This is not going to give me stability. So that little piece there is wrong. We need to come down on our front foot as we reposition our hands up higher, glance now. Remember that I don't want you going out this way because this will never work. Your hips are this way, but you want to get back this way. That's going to hurt my hip. So you want to come this way, come down, center, higher, slightly without moving my hips and waist. At the same time I want to bring this back, I have to take some safety measure. Now, simultaneous motions. Heel comes down, I drop my shoulders. I pivot to allow my, my hands to meet in the middle. I'm at 50-50, sort of. And what do I want to do? The most natural thing is to slide, put the weight and shift it to the back to set me up for yet another repulse. Up, ear, toe, drop shoulders, meet by sliding, uh, pivoting to the ball, then sliding. Okay, so anything you do now to get to where I want you to, that's good. Once you get the feel and the over, the over um, overview of all the movement, then we can then start to refine it, but you gotta start somewhere. But in starting somewhere, try to remember what my keywords are and try to remember why the ear, the hand comes to the ear at the same time. This is a safety measure. You don't wanna come this way and then decide this way. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna give you any safety. It's a hard one, but once you accomplish it, you'll feel so good and you'll keep on wanting to refine it. And um, it comes over time because yes, you have to hold your body weight on one foot at the same time, move backwards. But it's doable because you understand that your body is a gift and you can provide safety whenever you do something as awkward as, as, uh, as it looks, okay? But it doesn't really feel awkward over time because you then kick in to know what your body can do to help you move backwards. Um, sometimes, and I think it's good, although this is not like a, a, a beginning class that we once taught for many years, the 24 starting, no 10 form. Um, we just didn't do our hands and we said, okay, play your, play your loot, get that position down, and then just move this way. And I think it's a good um, drill to practice on. No hands, just getting your feet down first. And for me at this point, it's a little harder because I rely on my hands to help me to go backwards. But in the beginning, everything is not really set yet. You want to build up muscles. You want to build up good formation. Take them separately, especially dry, trying with the feet alone without the hands. 45 okay. degree it. Weight on the back and then put your position, your hands. Then you know that when you come out to do a backwards motion, the foot that comes back has to come out and down because you do not want to clash your feet. If you decide that you want to come this way and down, there's more apt to have a smaller L stance, which we know is not good. We need to come out further. So to do that, and you can calculate or you know mentally understand, you're gonna to have to bring the back, the insubstantial foot out and back. Then when you come down with your heel, you're still on the other block or the other line and you can check that, okay?
Okay, good job.